G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Muda here. Last time, I introduced how new storage tech is enormously accelerating the rate at which we can organize our items. I also showcased a fully functional storage system. However, many of you pointed out that for most items, box storage is far too excessive. And as the game accumulates more ambiguous item types that we won't need much storage for, like for example these couple block variants, our storage halls will get ridiculously long, even though each individual item type only occupies a small amount of the actual storage space. Like who would ever need all this storage capacity for wooden bowls? The solution would be to shorten the storage halls to only the items that you need the bulk capacity for, then add on a multi-item sorter for the rest. Here are some examples of multi-item sorters designed by members of the storage tech community. We have this expandable system that was designed by Datnerd. It's a nice and clean concept by Samus the Sage, which fits in the floor. And this fully built up and functional concept by Rapscallion. These utilize entire double chests as item filters to perform the sorting, allowing for many item types to be stored in the same storage slices. This makes a multi-item sorter perfect for handling ambiguous item types that do not require a large amount of storage. However, all of these designs share a common limitation. They can only unload a single inventory at a time at hopper speed. This means that for every item being sorted, it will brute force every single chest in your storage system before it finds the correct storage slice. And this is very inefficient. However, I have an idea that could parallelize multi-item sorting in the same way we do it with the box sorter in my main storage concept. And we'll achieve this using some entry level redstone computing. So let's build an encoded multi-item sorter. To start with, I want to conceptualize what we need from the system. You know, I think it was Michelangelo who once said, within every random block of redstone components, there is a multi-item sorter. What we want is a system that can handle any mixed boxes of items. What it will do is place down the box, take out the very first item, then it will use that item to work out which storage slice corresponds to it. Right here. The box will then go all the way to the end, return our filter item to the box, and our box will be placed into the slice where that item is stored, unload that item type completely, then bring the box back to the start and repeat the operation for the next item. So the first part should be fairly easy. What I'm going to do is use chests filled with reference items. So these represent the items we want to store in a particular slice. And so these chests will be stacked alongside each other in a row. They are filled such that if I take out a single item, you can see that lamp turns off. This means that we can use a hopper minecart configured as a movable item filter to work out what item is in a shulker box. So what I'm going to do is place down a box. So I now pull out the item and now we've formed an item filter. Doing this automatically, we get the dispenser placing down the box and then a piston breaking the box two game ticks later. Just like so. And so the item will go into the hopper minecart. The box will then go into a dropper line, which will send it to the end. And then to produce the correct timings for the piston bolt, I'm using the scaffolding trick. What will happen here is the scaffolding will take an additional game tick to activate this observer right here. Meanwhile, this observer will take no time at all to activate. So we'll get exactly one game tick of delay between these pistons and these pistons. With everything set up, the result looks like this. As you can see, we were able to detect that an item was removed from this particular chest, and therefore the item in the box could be stored in this slice. Now we just need a system to collect one of these items, merge it back with the box, and send the additional item back to its chest. A little while later and we have a working encoder. If I throw the box in here, you can see it working. Encodes the item, 
then returns the reference item to its chest. Now Shulker Box lands in this instant dropper line, and this will be important for another step later on. So if I just keep throwing this box in, you see it works every time. Okay, never mind, it just completely broke. All I've done here is strip the system down to its bare components so I can see everything clearly and continuously ran it until it ran into an issue. And I think I found the culprit. If you look down here you can see a shulker box has been left behind. Listen up here because you're about to get some top secret professional help. In my experience, there are three main areas which can cause confusion and frustration in storage tech. You have the random momentum from the items as a shulker box gets broken. The hopper hash map tick priority. And intertileability interference. Let's take a look at some specific examples where these can affect our contraptions. The first issue is actually what's affecting our encoder. In this chamber right here, I have another setup right here made to replicate that. And what you see is the box is being placed down with air above and below it before it gets broken by this piston. So if I just cycle it continuously, the issue is that the box takes a random trajectory every time it's broken. And so there is a chance for the box to get stuck either underneath this hopper right here, or the box could fly up, get stuck on top of the piston head, and actually get stuck behind the piston, and then fall straight to the ground. There we go, you just saw it. It got stuck right inside of the gap between the hopper and the dispenser. If I was to place a block right here, however, and run the system again, I can now tick warp this for literally forever, and the box will never get stuck. The reason why this simple change makes the system 100% reliable it's because this block is cancelling the upwards momentum of the shulker box which would allow it to run into the back of the piston head and get stuck. However, in this configuration, the box has only one direction to go and that is towards this hopper. So with your storage tech, always make sure that you double check all the systems which are breaking shulker boxes. A similar issue can also arise by shooting droppers into water streams. In order to cancel the random momentum, what you can do is introduce two corners which the items need to go through. And this will ensure that the item aligns to one corner, then the next corner, and therefore the item should be perfectly aligned by the time it reaches the end. So always be cautious of how random item momentum can affect your storage tech. Now we get to the second issue of hopper tick priority. This particular contraption right here is a shulker box loader. If I was to replace this hopper right here with a dropper and have this hopper firing items into it, it will work as a perfectly normal mixed box loader. As you saw, the system reset properly and there were no issues. But then watch what happens if I were to break these two hoppers, place down this hopper first and this hopper second. Now, if the system tries to break the box, it completely roots itself. This is specifically because this particular arrangement of hoppers is extremely sensitive to the order in which these two hoppers are processed each game tick. Even if I were to break these two hoppers, and then replace them in the correct order. If I were to unload these chunks, and then reload the system, the game will actually assign these hoppers to the talenty list in a completely random order dependent on their specific location in the world. Meaning that right now, we have no idea whether the system would even operate in this particular location. So let's test that quickly. No, nope. it turns out in this particular location, it does not work. However, if I just remove this dropper, 
and place it on a hopper like that instead. The system will now work regardless of what location you put it in. So always be aware that if you chain hoppers together like this, your contraption can be locational and might not work in other locations than where you initially built it. If you want to test for this reliably, without just pacing in different locations and seeing if it works or not, what you can do is break all the hoppers and then replace them in an order opposite to what you initially placed them in. Our final issue is intertileable interference. Can you see any issues with this contraption if I were to tile it? I mean, it seems to work perfectly fine without interfering with the adjacent slice. So what could possibly go wrong here? Well, what would happen if I were to tick freeze, activate one of the slices, step forward one tick, and activate the next slice. Now, let's unfreeze and watch the chaos ensue. Hold on, I thought I activated both of the slices, but this slice didn't actually activate. What's going on here? The issue is that not only are we quasi powering this sticky piston underneath, but if this block is powered, we're also quasi powering this piston which sends the update to this piston in the adjacent slice. So if I activate the two slices very closely together, they will actually interfere with one another. So just make sure that you're always aware of these interference issues and keep in mind that if something can go wrong, then it will go wrong. All right. After reassessing all of the components of the encoder, I've now rearranged everything in order to address all the issues that I previously highlighted. In order to deal with the random momentum of the shulker box, I have this piston which pushes this block in above the shulker box, which cancels the upwards momentum, forcing the box to go into that hopper. So if I cycle this with a water stream, we'll be able to test whether it works reliably. There we go, encoding the slice, resetting, box gets cycled back. If I then tick warp, we can then assess whether this is reliable. It seems to be cycling continuously with no issues whatsoever. Now that we've verified that it works, all I've done here is broken everything down to the bare components that we can get a better idea of what's going on. As I already stated previously, we're using a chest set with a fresh hold just on the very edge of going from 2 to 1 signal strength. This means that our hopper minecart with the filter item, we can detect when the item gets pulled out. The piston bolt gives us the fastest way to transport the minecart while having it read from every single chest along the way. When the hopper minecart reaches the end, it will first drop the item that it pulled out of the box into this hopper underneath the rails and then it will get launched by this slime launcher up to this rail up the top which on the finished design is a piston bolt to get us as fast as possible back to the start but here I'm just using a normal rail because it's easy to see what's going on. When we detect that the threshold of a chest has dropped it will retract this redstone block unlocking the hopper corresponding to the chest which lost this item. This means that as the hopper minecart runs back over the top, it will drop the reference item back into the chest that it originally took it from. This also means that if our filter item is not found anywhere in any of the chests in the system, it will not pull out any item from the chest and therefore the item will be pulled out return to its box, and the hopper cart will return empty to the beginning. When we place down the box, take out the items and break the box, the box is put into this instant dropper line to ensure that it can overtake the hopper minecart and get to the other side before the item arrives. Then, the item gets pulled out of the minecart, put back into the box, 
When the box is broken immediately, put into an instant dropper line and sent all the way up here. And then from this point, we will have an additional instant dropper line which will place the shulker box in the slice corresponding to whichever chest had its threshold dropped. So what's next is to enable the encoder to process boxes automatically one after the other and have them all land in the correct slice for sorting. We're approaching the home stretch and if you're still with me then good on ya because it takes a lot more of my time to make these videos than it does to watch them. So I hope you're liking everything so far. Let me know if you like this kind of video where I go for a redstone project in detail. Now we have the system sorting through boxes automatically. If I go to this chest here, we can see that all of our boxes have been sorted. So I can just pop them back into the start. And one by one, they'll make it back to this chest right here. And with 16 chests in total, we get a sorting cycle of 92 game ticks. If you wanted to add additional chests, you'll get an additional game tick per slice of this piston bolt. However, given that 16 double chests alone gives you 864 different item types that this system can sort, I highly doubt that this will need to be expanded anytime soon. So our last tricky step will be to make a system which places down a box, forms an item filter from the first item in the box, removes all of that item from the box and then breaks the box the instant that it runs out of that exact item. In fact, I already have a system that can do this. This is Datnerd's shulker box splitter, which I have modified with an additional extension that forces it to eject the box once the first item type is removed. A bit of a caveat to using the two white tileable splitter, however, that now two of these chests correspond to a single splitter which has only a single output which means our storage is only half as dense now I believe that nerd the absolute legend is currently working on a one white tileable solution for this but in the meantime we'll just have to use the two white tileable system for our outputs all we need to do is connect some storage silos if we stack chests like so, all our items will simply flow to the bottom until the chests all fill up. However, it would be nice to be able to organize our items using slot allocation like so. However, all the multi-item sorters that I know of either run at less than hopper speed, don't have this feature, or aren't expandable like Samus the Sage's one that you can see right here. Although it is actually possible. This is my attempt at a hopper speed, expandable, multi-item sorter with slot allocation. However, it does have one downside. If I put some concrete in here, yeah, it's pretty noisy. But it does allocate the slots properly. As you can see, it's ignoring all this white stained glass and going straight to here. So I guess it really depends what you're after. So I finally got everything set up and took it for a test run. But it turns out there was still another issue to resolve. It turns out that this extension that I added to data splitter is actually directional. So currently it's in the correct orientation, so if I get it to do a sorting operation, it should function as normal. What will happen is, it will retract. And as you just saw, this resident block got pushed up again and pushed back down immediately and did not power this piston a second time. In this orientation, however, I can make it sort something. When it goes to reset, as you just saw, the sticky piston just sped out its block. In order to solve the problem, I completely removed this directional component and added some additional delay before the slice would reset itself and place another box. The result is that we're now sorting items with ease. So all I've done is just put a few example items in our encoder chest and stuck in some boxes from the Hermitcraft server for it to sort. And you can clearly see the advantage of using the slot allocation as every single slot will be filled up to 64 from the top to the bottom and there will be no backlog of items behind the chest 
in these hoppers. Just don't stand next to it when it's sorting. But in all seriousness, if you don't mind the backlog, there's no reason why you can't just use a hopper towel like this. So there we have it. An encoded multi-item sorter capable of efficiently sorting items into assigned storage slices. This could make a perfect addition to the main storage concept I introduced in my previous video. You could massively shorten the storage halls, then have one of these systems sitting at the end to pick up items not assigned to box storage. No more should we stress out about using an entire box storage slice for wax weathered cut copper stairs. You have no idea how many tries it needed to pronounce that. So thank you very much for watching, be sure to check out the world download in the description, and I will see you next time.